Welcome to the first installment of the Influencer Interviews. We have uh, Serena Tom with us today. Uh, she works at Equinox, among other things. And essentially, uh, we're choosing people that are just living a good lifestyle that really jive with our brand and our company. And uh, Serena is definitely one of them. She has a really cool story. Um, I love it because I sort of did the same thing, <laughs> your corporate life, and then just said, you know what, what what's going on? My sister did it as well. So we'll just get right into it. If you want to introduce yourself and maybe just uh, a little bit about your story and, and how you got involved and whatnot. Sure. Um, so my name is Serena Tom. I'm originally from Toronto, Canada, and um, I initially moved to New York City to pursue a career. I didn't know you were from Toronto. Yeah, I'm Canadian. <laughs> Surprise. I know. Actually, there's another girl in the class that she's Canadian. As oh well. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you have to let me I know. Yeah. Her, yeah. There are so few of us. Exactly. <laughs> <In the room. laughs> and um, but I actually moved to New York City initially to pursue a career in advertising and in marketing. And during that period of my life, I thought that's what I wanted. I love the adrenaline. I love the strategy aspect. And then, you know, over time, with like being at the office and working late, and um, it came to a point like it just burned me out and you know there there's a moment like you know there must be another life that would be more fulfilling for me because um, I always wanted to give back and you know when you're in the corporate world you you don't really have that opportunity to do that so um, I initially and also while I was in the corporate world it, I didn't have many opportunities to you know focus on working out um, because of the long hours. Yeah, because of the and, long, yeah. long hours. Even in advertising, you have to work on weekends. And, um, you know, you have to Especially give, in New York City. Oh, I know. You, this yeah. was all in New York City, right? Yeah, this yeah. is all in New York City. And um, So you have, like, competition. There's other people that want to maybe get ahead. Or they're working weekends. Or they're working yeah. long hours. So you feel like you have to, you know, rise up. You, oh, yeah. Did I, you feel at all guilty, like, maybe not working so hard? You know, because I, I look around New York City now and I, you know, I see it sort of yeah. right now. <laughs> um, absolutely. I, um, especially in New York City, you always feel like slightly guilty. Oh, I want to leave work early to go take this class or I want to leave early to like take a yoga class or to even have time for yourself. And, um, you know, and it's always hard to find that balance. And What was that one moment? You said there was a moment where you just said, was, was there like a enough is enough moment where you just said, you know what, because I guarantee there's, there's some people out there that are, they're the cog in the wheel and they're doing the day to day. That's how I was at Oppenheimer Funds. Yeah. Was there a moment where you just said, I, I, I got to find something else? Uh, absolutely. So um, I was sitting at my desk. Oh, this is specific. This, I yeah, like it. Yeah. I was sitting at my desk. Um, I was at an agent ad agency and you know our team had been working for months on this you know marketing campaign and then you know we were on a conference call after we had worked on the campaign and then the client said they didn't like anything that we proposed and we had to start all over again and repropose a new campaign and you know, it had taken months of like, to get you know, to, give, there. to get to that point, you know, we gave up, we worked really late. I had to give up a lot of, um, you know, birthdays. I had to give up not being able to attend, you know, personal events like, you know, baby showers, uh, you know, my friend's life events for this project. And then the client said, you know, they weren't happy. And then we had to start all over. And I sat afterwards, I was like, I can't believe this just happened. Like, yeah, you know, you know, you're at your desk by by yourself, or was it the the group um, together? Well, I was at, I had left that you know conference call, and I sat at my desk, and then I was like, you know, I can't keep doing this because time is wasted, yeah. and you know, you never get that time back. So um, it was at that moment I was like, I need to find a way that, you know, to create a lifestyle that was more positively uplifting, not just for myself, but for others, because it was yeah. also hard for my team to have to, like, you know, endure something like that. And, you know, whether it's marketing or advertising or 
finance or you're a lawyer, um, you know, to cope with the stress, you know, it's often difficult and overwhelming for people. So I really wanted, um, I really wanted to give students and people this opportunity to heal themselves mm -hmm. because I was in that same situation, you know, when I was in the corporate world. So. And then when <laughs> that happened, what was from, say, that decision? Did you sleep on it? And you obviously said, you know, what this isn't for me. Like, what was the from that moment to, you know, what was the steps leading to? Oh, so after that. Um, Unless you're like screwed, I'm out, and you just like <laughs> you just went out and like uh, you know gunfire, you know, just left. Yeah. Um, I didn't, I didn't quite you know quit my job at that moment, but it definitely was a breakthrough. It was a wake up. It was a wake up call to me, like I need to come up with a plan to come up with the next stage and the do? next correct career path for myself. So I'm like, were first you already I was like, practicing I, yoga? Um, I wasn't practicing seriously, but it was that moment in my professional life that really pushed me to start doing yoga yeah. a lot more often. So I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go take yoga. Mm -hmm. And it kind of started from there. Yeah. You know, I would try different yoga classes. You know, you kind of have to find what style would work for you. And, you know, the gentler styles, they were, they were okay. It helped me learn a lot of my form and my alignment but I really needed to get my butt kicked. Yeah, I yeah, really yeah. needed to sweat it out. So I would take um, a power yoga class um, with a teacher named Scott Herrig. And, um, in New York. In New York City. Yeah. And so if you ever have the chance to take um, classes with him, please do so. He's, and, um, he's Where is he? Is he he's based his in own New York. studio? Or? Um, he's currently at Pure Yoga. Okay. And um, he was a professional mountain biker. Who really? Came, yeah, and he was very tight. And then after years of like just sheer tightness and wrecking his body from professional sports, Especially that. he pursued yeah. yoga. And now he's a yoga teacher. And um, he's also like the director of like a yoga program at Pure. Wow. So I took um, my first yoga class with him. And I really felt connected where even though it was so challenging and the postures required a deep amount of mental concentration, it was very physically healing and mentally healing as well. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. so he was the first one. You were already taking it. This moment comes. It was or like was, on and off. And then yeah. once I started taking it with. Because there's so many different types of yoga. There's so many. Yeah. And, like, and also like fusion and hybrid styles. And you know, Every style is different for every person. So. Yeah, and, yeah, and when you actually said, you know what, I have to, what would, how did you like plan on, because leaving a corporate world, especially if you're not like 21, <laughs> yeah. and you like, you know, responsibilities and rent and yeah. things like that, like how, like maybe the time frame, and then when did you actually leave? Make the switch? Yeah. Um, I get this question a lot. There was is that because period. other people like, feel the same way and who are wanting to transition into another career path that is more rewarding or more in line with their passion the f the transition period is very challenging you'd have to juggle your professional career that you currently have and I also had to do my yoga teacher certification on the evenings and weekends and you also have to start teach I had to start teaching on oh, the yeah. side on top of my corporate job. So there was a good year of, wow. it took, of, yeah. of like juggling both careers. And then I had to start getting private clients while I still had my corporate job um, in order to make the full switch. Oh yeah. yeah so How did you approach that? Did you, oh people would approach you or? Um, it first starts with taking, like teaching um, classes yeah. because you got to get your name out there. Um, also, like social media is very big. Oh yeah, um, which we'll talk about because <laughs> yeah. you, I actually just noticed, and we'll talk about it a little bit. But you have photos on the left, and then quotes on, on the, the right. right. Yeah, yeah I was. Quotes, yeah, it's great. Yeah. yeah, I was first introduced that by someone else. They had something similar, but um, like kind of like boxed. Stacked this way, yeah. boxed horizontally yeah. as opposed to vertically. It's like so brilliant, and there's so many different methods behind it, but. What was your, your main on, uh, maybe even, did you have any fears like putting yourself out there or did you, get, did you have any critics like either going um, out on your own or? I definitely had a lot of 
um, doubters resistance or? and people that doubted me. Um, um, even my parents, they you know they always, it's perfectly normal. They'll be afraid of like taking for you being yeah, yeah having like a stable career to like pursuing the unknown and something yeah. that's you know it's a lot more lucrative. Especially if they had a long. Career yes, in something. Yes. Yeah, my mom was a teacher for 26 years. So. And it's very stable and yep. it's very consistent. Yeah. And, um, you know, to make that transition, it's like, you know, they were in a generation where they had that stability. Yep. And to pursue something different, it wasn't even. Um, it didn't even cross their minds in oh, that yeah. generation. So yeah. I, I know what you mean. And it's it had ha in like literally one generation later, <laughs> yeah. people are now questioning like everything, which is actually good. I know. I would say, um, I think a big thing is um, from a business standpoint, um, especially if you're going to pursue something that you love, it's the power of a niche market. Mm -hmm. So, for example, there are a lot of personal trainers out there, there are a lot of yoga teachers, and if you kind of just have, um, yes, you can have a well-rounded um, background of expertise, but if you don't have that niche, you're kind of just gonna be dissolved in the ocean. Oh yeah. So you need to um, have like a niche of specialization that will really set you apart. So um, for me, my, my background is I practice Ashtanga Yoga, which is a very physically challenging practice, but it's gradual. I'm taking the class. It is definitely physically challenging. <laughs> and I'm in the front row. Yes. I'm in the front row. So. He works so hard. Because <laughs> <laughs> everyone around me is... Doing handstands. Yeah, yeah they're, they're doing handstands, and I'm like, I could barely, you know. But you will get there. You've been very yeah. consistent and, um, you know, it's just having the mindset, really. So, so you what, what made you choose that? Um, what made me choose Ashtanga Yoga is... Because you took to power yoga. Yeah, I gravitated that. towards power yoga. Um, the thing is, is that there came a point in power yoga, um, I had plateaued, and um, I felt like I could do all the poses, but also I wasn't really learning um, there came a point you always want to keep the learning going. Like, Thank you. So yeah. yeah, it's so true. Because that's what keeps the passion alive. Absolutely. You know, if yeah. it's anywhere, an athlete or anything. So yeah. you said. So you already reached the base, and then. Yeah. So I would just take power yoga classes from, I mean, you know, some of my favorite instructors. But um, I felt like, you know, I would see these photos of beautiful of. Uh, postures that other yoga teachers were achieving and I felt that I had needed more teachings and guidance to sh for them to show me the way so that's how I started learning Ashtanga yoga because it's one of yes it is one of the traditional methods of yoga but um, I liked how there was a set progressive sequence and once you've achieved a certain pose then the teacher will teach you the next posture to learn and to master. And you know, it takes time. You go at your own pace. Um, it also forces you to um, increase your memory, brain retention, yeah. because you you have to memorize the sequence of the poses. Oh, yeah. the order. The, you have to remember the order. Wow. So that's why, I, um, have you ever been in a yoga class where the teacher kind of forgets? Yeah. But that never happens but to me because in Shanghai Yoga, I always have to remember like What's 60 to 70 poses in that order. You remembered 60 to 70 poses? Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. Wow. How long did it take you to get to that level or at least? Um, so I've been practicing yoga since 2008. Um, so I've been practicing for nine years. But everyone has their like a different path. Like some people only practice for two or three years, but then they practice all the time, so their growth is a lot faster. But for me, when I first started yoga, I was in and out of it. And then when I was seeking a, a career transition, then I started to practice a lot more frequently. But oh, everyone absolutely. has their own Their journey. own pace. Yeah, and their yeah, own yeah. pace. And um, it also depends on um, where you're at, like physically, when you start yoga, if yeah. that makes any sense. Going into yoga. Going into yoga. Yeah. So, for example, I have a client. He's lost Ages like thirty are, pounds. Really? Yeah. And eight, wow. Yeah. He lost thirty pounds, and he's only been practicing for he's he's lost thirty pounds since he started practicing yoga with me 
for one year. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, and. Um, and yeah. he's going to probably keep it off. Oh, yeah. It's not like would. a diet or, you know. It, it's a it's way now, of life. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. I used to be 20 pounds heavier as wow. well because I used to always sit at a desk. Yep. Um, I also had scoliosis because I would always be hunched over and my posture, um, you know, was in the worst form when I had my corporate job. And um, so, so, yeah, what, are, what are like, the benefits? I know there's, it, like, there's probably you know, the, the basic yeah. ones, but like what are, what are like even small things, you even know? Even small things? Yeah. Um, I would say... Like daily or weight, you know, throughout your day. Most important, like what people don't realize, it goes beyond the flexibility. I've had students where they've lowered their b blood pressure, um, they've experienced weight loss. Wow. Because it's like it's you're both. training your mind to like be cognizant of what you eat and how you live your life. Um, I've also, um, you know, it improves blood circulation, which is really important. Very important. Because if you ever have any muscle tightness or muscle impingement, you need blood to be circulating especially into the fascia. Down, yeah, right? Especially sitting down, Especially sitting down. Yeah, right here. <laughs> the yeah. knee bent, absolutely. Um, it improves blood circulation. Um, it also improves digestion as well because your body is not stagnant. You're, you're moving and you're releasing um, any blockages in the body. Um, you're also, um, you know, a lot of people experience like, you know, joint pain or like back pain. Yeah. And so all of these postures are intended to heal and release that. And, um, you know, I just want to say like, you know, there's still a lot of people out there that believe like, oh, I should just take a pill and I'm gonna lose weight, or oh, I'm gonna take a pill and it's gonna take away all my back pain, uh, all of my joint pain. But you know, substances aren't really um, what gonna create that transformation. Yeah, exactly. It's a band aid, but the problems internally are still there. Yeah. So that's why I find um, yoga so transformational, and I really want to share this with as many students as possible because it is a very healing practice and. I, I also love how yoga, um, well, especially for New Yorkers, we go through so much stress and pressure, and yoga is a way to um, cope with that stress and any anxiety. So, um, especially yeah, the difference between LA and New York. <laughs> like LA, like my sister, she would get out at like 3 p.m. and then go for a hike. That's amazing. We can't really we can't really go for a hike. You know, we can maybe hike home. You know, if the <laughs> that's subway's not. The same. Not, that's that's not funny the that same. you brought up the prescription or release pills or whatnot. So yeah. before the we were talking before the interview on uh, this movie called Heal, and essentially they talk about that a lot. They say that it's a band aid, but you really have to get the core root. Is it? Are you sitting down? Is it your mind? Are yeah. you not med like? Where is the stress coming from that's affecting a part of your body or your blood pressure or your weight or something? What's making you caught? What, what's causing you to overeat or something? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I can, and actually, I'll, I'll just lead into this: is that during the class, you say a lot on mind over, or just what are some of the mantras? Because it's interesting. She, she will. Feel the class, and if it's if we're going through pain or a tough area, yeah. she'll say mind over matter. Yeah, really and then there's other good ones. So oh, can yeah. you talk about that a little bit more? Like, um, what makes like, my class so different is that I just don't tell the students how to do a pose. Um, I'm integrating these mantras or these um, almost like important words of you know inspirational wisdom to take it into your day to, to your daily life. Yeah. So um, some of them, it's like, you know, you never allow your own emotions to control you. It's not the impulses that you have to react to. You know, you are not always in control over you the outcome. You say that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so true. And, yeah. and um, you know, in the, also, because I teach hot yoga, it's very, you know, with the heat and the environment, um, Sometimes it creates a sense of um, a little bit of stress or pressure. Yeah. But you have to keep in mind, like, you know, we're, you're always going to go through a stressful situation in your life because that's an external factor. And you can't control that. You can't get mad over that. But, you know, the fact that even though it's there, you're 
everything's going to be okay. You're always going to be able to persevere and to overcome. So whether it's a personal um, obstacle or a stressful situation yeah. going on in your life, that moment is always going to pass and you're always um, going to overcome. So these I've, are I've some, felt that too, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll be <laughs> a tough part, <laughs> and, the and then... You're like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm gonna die in about 25 seconds. You're like, my number, and I'm like... It, but it's true, it's like once... It's weird, because once you get over that hurdle, it's kind of like a clearing, it's kind of like there is a success, yeah. and your body says, okay, what can we do more? Absolutely. And it's, it is perfect timing, too, because you feel that... You feel your mind just giving you excuses. Stop, or slow down, or... Something. Yeah, absolutely. And um, and I just, to go over um, like the healing benefits of yeah. yoga. Um, so I have a very um, short story. So I had um, a student who had a lot, like whatever um, he would eat, he all of a sudden started to get these huge stomach pains. And he would go to these food allergists and they said, oh, you know, you're fine, we do these food tests. And he's like, it can't be. Like, every time I eat anything, anything. it's like now I'm having these these huge pains. And, wow. you know, he said, I went, he's like, I went to Brazil, and ever since I came to Brazil, I've been having all these stomach pains to the point, like, I can't even get out of bed. And he's like, and he's like, excuse my language, but he would like vomit and whatever. And yeah. he's like, this is a problem. And these food allergists and all these doctors would say, you're fine, um, maybe you're just going over through stress. And he's like, something is wrong. Like I haven't um, experienced something like this Ever. before, yeah. um, except, you know, I went to Brazil and then I came back. And then he would go to like all these different doctors. And then finally he's like, I'm desperate. Something. He's like, cause I need to be able yeah. to eat healthy. I can't sleep and- Yeah, especially um, going around yeah. all day. Yeah. And, um, what he went to an Ayurvedic doctor and um, to get any type of answers, and then that Ayurvedic doctor said, you know, what is that by the way? Um, it's a doctor that where they specialize in like understanding like the chakras, and it's a form of like alternative medicine. healing yeah. medicine. Um, focused a lot on the nutrition, okay. on the individual's current nutrition. Yeah. And um, they do integrate the aspects of the yoga philosophy and um, like chakras, like the energies and yeah. how that affects how you digest food and how you cope with stress. So, um, so he went to an Ayurvedic doctor and the doctor said, well, you know, basically when you went to Brazil, whatever you ate, it had like, it wasn't clean food. So there were like parasites. And when you come back to the city, you know, if you're eating regular proteins, if you're eating like fatty foods, the proteins, sorry, the parasites are eating Doesn't all those foods. Well. Yeah, so yeah. your body can't digest it because yeah. you still have these parasites in oh. the, yeah, and yeah. so he said, what you have to- That just to, sounds painful. It is painful. Yeah. And so after you eat the food, after the parasites eat the food, then it goes into your, they're eating up your intestines. Yeah. Oh my god. So the only way you can clean the body and detox is if you have to kill the parasites. So yeah. he had to change his diet and he only could eat like vegetables. He literally had to go on a vegan based diet yeah. because lots of water and lots of water. Yeah. And then um, and then within like they said you have to have the strict diet, which is basically a vegan diet, because if you eat meat or fish, it'll attach it'll, ta that. it'll attach the parasites will attach to that. Yeah. And then um, like within three weeks, he was like cured. Wow. Yeah, and I've actually heard a similar story with a woman. Um, I think her name is like Chrissy Carr. She cured herself from cancer because she had to kill the paras, like all the, um, you know, from within. From within the yeah. infection within. So yeah. she had to change her diet, and then like the cancer had just like disintegrated. It's incredible. Yeah, it yeah. is incredible. So I really wanted to promote like the healing powers of yoga because it really starts from um, and your mind the, your mind yeah. and what's interesting is like when you practice yoga you're because you're training your mind to be more um, in tune with what you're eating and how it affects your body you don't like crave sweet foods you don't yeah. like crave like you know some people are used to huge consumptions of alcohol but like 
because of yoga, you're able to like con control those, how do you say it? Control those urges to like Continue overeat. Continue or yeah. over drink. Yeah, yeah, I've actually, I've noticed that in since cycling on Saturdays, yeah, it I in, I can't go out yeah. like too hard on Friday because if you've ever been on a bike hungover, it is not fun because <laughs> you can't go anywhere. It's you so know, true. it's not running where you just stop. You know, you yeah. just you you're continuing. So when someone goes into yoga, what would be like? I guess like um, either a stepping stone that mm -hmm. they start with. You know, I would not recommend the, the hot yoga immediately. Yeah. <laughs> um, Take a few classes, yeah. um, like beginner yoga, um, slow flow yoga, or alignment yoga in the beginning. And once you feel comfortable with all the poses that they are, um, that those teachers are introducing you to, then, you know, feel free to try hot yoga yeah. or um, vinyasa. It was and the same thing with you. Once you hit the plateau, you're like, what's the next level? Absolutely. What do I do differently? Absolutely. And the th I think I also want to um, communicate, like, you want to find that balance of, like, always continuing the learning yeah. without putting stress on yourself to take your practice to the next level. So um, I know I see it a lot in my class. Everyone likes to do the fun handstands and the arm balances <laughs> and they want to get that right yeah, <laughs> and get yet. that right away but um, you know it, I think it's also important to like you know appreciate the journey from where you started and the journey for how far you will transform because um, from where I was nine years ago um, like not just like my health physically but even just my level of overall happiness to where I am now. I'm very grateful for the journey that I've taken because I could share it with other people. Yeah. Like I've been there. I've been in, you know, that corporate setting where it was like I felt like there was no way out and I have to have this job forever, but it wasn't fulfilling. So I could really empathize and under and understand what people especially New Yorkers are oh, going yeah. through. Have so. you seen like more people come to you now than say nine years ago? Oh yeah. Or like so, even four years ago like more people that are like um, yeah. they want to tra transition out or something like that once yeah. they start seeing the benefits? A lot of people have um, a lot of people come to my class and have shared their story and I'm very um, I'm very honored and very grateful that they feel so comfortable to share their story because so many people just come into class and leave, you know, which is fine, <laughs> which is fine. Class and yeah. Yeah. Um, or they just keep, or they have somewhere else to go and, you know, I get it because, you know, we all have busy schedules, but, um, but yeah, I would say over the years, people, a lot more people have come to my class and they don't just see it as like taking yoga. They see it like, it's a way of life. It is a way of life, and if they miss it, it's like it really throws off every other aspect yeah. in their whole day. And um, so, but I will, I, I do want to say, like, when I was juggling my corporate job, mm -hmm. and then I was teaching, like, at that time, just two classes a week. Um, I, when I first started, I only had like five, six people, which yeah. is normal, um, and then. And then all of a sudden, like within a month, I would have, I remember I had this Thursday 6 p.m. class at the studio and then it just went from like 40 people. Zero and, to, yeah, yeah, zero to 60, yeah. yeah. I literally did a story this morning because there was a TV across the way yeah. and they had Bloomberg on and I'm like, I am so glad I am not in that room right there. Yeah. Because it's just, yeah, I was just unhappy and, uh, and it's scary. It is scary, yeah. You know, and there will be doubters, and there there are a lot of people that are either considering it or having a side hustle. You know, whatever oh, that yeah. is. You know, I would, I would. Your friends change too when you change jobs. I, I actually, I yeah, it's funny too. Since doing this, uh, there's been a couple people that like, like they have to almost be in fitness. Yeah. yeah, or just like into it. It could be anything. It could be biking or running yeah, or whatever. Yeah, of course. Because it, you just relate. It's it's because it's not easy getting up. I get up early, but yeah. like getting up and then going there, of course, consistently, yeah. <laughs> and having the lifestyle. So, what is something that you believe that other people think is insane? 
what is it that I believe that other people think is insane? Yeah, you have a belief um, or just maybe something that you either, they question it all the time or? Um, I'd say something that people believe is that like everything that I've worked very hard for was actually just came so easy. Yeah. Um, that's like a huge misconception. Um, I've had to, um, you know, when I transitioned into like yoga and fitness and wellness, I had to like live off of savings, you know? I, I didn't have my parents to just like be there to like, you know, kind of like sweep me under yeah. and like give me everything. So I think the biggest misconception is like, it was Where overnight. I am, yeah, and that it was overnight yeah. that I, um, that it was just like given to me, and like, oh, that I want, um, you know, like from developing a website to having these retreats, it's just like, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a like a trust fund kid, you yeah. know, it's like yeah. this. It took work. It took work. It took um, a lot of time, and it also um, the reality is is like. There are moments you're, you, yes, you doubt yourself, but at the same time, you know that you're doing what's best for you. Yeah. So I think the biggest misconception is like, um, people think like, oh, like everything just came so easy for me, but it's not. It's been a lot of hard work and. Um, or that it is easy right now. Or um, even, does anyone. I would say it's always. I think it's easier now that I've been established in the yoga industry for so long on one end, but at the same time, um, getting to the next level is like something that... So what I, is next? I would like to have my own book on like yoga That's and how awesome. it lies, how it is aligned with like the pursuit of happiness and like how it can change your life. I want to have a book. Um, I think it should be yeah. a story. Yeah. Probably, like honestly, yeah. yeah. It, it, it's just people jive with. It like just, saved my life. It wow. saved my life. So I, I'd want to have a book. Yeah. Um, I'd also, um, I recently. Are you writing? Um, on the side, but I'll probably need an editor to kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. refine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I would also, I guess, the next steps. I've recently. Um, loved and gotten into traveling more because when I was in my corporate life and I think a lot of people can relate to this it's like when I was in my corporate life I never traveled because I was working I never I always felt guilty to take time yeah. off even for a long weekend to go somewhere out of New York City because I was always working I didn't do yeah. this because I was always working and now that I'm at a point in my life it's like wow time has really gone by like gone by fast, yeah. and it's gone by fast. I've really started to um, really love traveling and exploring and seeing how other people live their life. And um, so I do want to integrate Where? like, huh? Bali or? Um, I've gone to Bali. Yeah. I've been to Mykonos. Um, next year I'm going to be going to Italy. So wow. I want to integrate. Where in Italy? I'm going to be going to, um, where am I going? Gonna go to Rome. Gonna go to like the Amalfi Coast. I've never been, no. so I, yeah. I really want to carve out that time. And I'm gonna also go to Florence. Florence, so, I heard, was amazing. Yeah. It was really <laughs> nice. Yeah. So, um, but I also want to integrate that with like leading workshops, guest teaching. That's great. So that yeah. that's um, kind of like my next. So what would take you to the next level? To the next. Definitely level. a book. Yeah. yeah definitely. definitely a book. Yeah. Um, well, in terms of the touring, I'd say it's going to have to start like branching outside of New York City, mm -hmm. like teaching, like guest teaching in California, um, guest teaching at another Equinox at another location because I know they're like expanding. Um, outside of New York. Outside of yeah. New York. So that would be um, kind of like the next steps for me. Yeah. Um, I've heard like that's very common among like yoga teachers. Like first, you have to branch out of whatever current city you're in, so in this case, 
yeah. New York and start teaching Or even just Florida. the studio. Yeah. <laughs> Branch out of that the studio. Too. Yeah. That too. That it too. So, Would you um, say the United States is probably one of the biggest consumers or... Uh, for yoga? Yeah. Um, definitely. It's become very popular. It? Um, it's definitely become popular in the um, United States, although, you know, in areas where they're not Australia. as... Australia, yeah. it's very big. Um, actually, even in Asia. When really? I was in Bali, I was really surprised that um, more people have like memberships to yoga studios as opposed to gym memberships. Yeah, so. and in Tai Chi, right? Yeah, and yeah. in Tai Chi as well. Because um, on the FDR, I want to say, uh, yeah, on the FDR, you'll see early morning. Oh yeah, they're practicing yeah. Tai Chi. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I look at them and I'm like, at that age, I wish I could move like they do because they feel and they look so strong. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, they do. And they're more calm and centered. Absolutely. I got to tell you, yeah, that's <laughs> what I need. So we're going to be wrapping it up. Um, this has been great. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, no, listen, for the first one, I can say that the the benefits that I've received from yoga is clearly been highlighted on top of the fact of just being a little bit more uh, grounded, especially me, I also played sports. I didn't do uh, mountain biking professionally. So obviously, where can people find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram at Great Serena Instagram. Yeah. Um, You can also find me, I have my own work website. Uh, at It's www.serenatom.com. Um, you All can, the links are going to be below. Yes, and you can also, um, if you have membership at Equinox, you can also find me there. Yeah, yes. yeah, that's a crowded class. You have to get there early. Yes, or book a spot. You at can some, at some locations. Really? Yeah, like oh, at Gramercy, I didn't know you that. can book your spot. Actually, at yeah, Gramercy, place, yeah. yeah. I always just show up. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> and okay. they're like, "All right, fine, just get in there." <laughs> well, listen, I highly recommend. Not only do you follow her on Instagram, you check out her classes and her website. But if you guys have any questions, um, is there also maybe an email that they can oh, send yeah. anything? Uh, feel free to send me an email. Uh, it's Serena, S-E-R-E-N-A, at serenatom.com. Yeah. yeah. Well, you've been wonderful. Thank you. And if you guys have any questions, let us know. And also, as well, if you have any yoga, fitness, anyone that you'd want us to uh, feature, shoot me an email, charles at Have a great day and talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Bye.